Vampire Mind by Carolyn Sparks. Book 10 of the Love at Stake Theories. Chapter 1. After 499 years of existence, Connor Buchanan arrived at an inescapable conclusion regarding his life. He was a cold-hearted old bastard. He slowed to a walk after checking the exterior grounds at Ramatech. He'd enjoyed zipping through the trees at vampire speed with the cool breeze whipping at his face and filling his lungs with that hearty scent of newly budded leaves and flowers. But then he realized why he welcomed the coming of spring. Not for the warmer temperatures, no. Not for the promise of rebirth and renewal, since he would remain the same as he'd been for centuries. No, to be brutally honest with himself, it was a shorter night he was looking forward to. That meant longer days and more deep sleep, more time spent in utter oblivion. No thoughts, no memories, no remorse. The main building at Ramatech Industries came into view and he slowed his pace even more, struck by a sudden reluctance to re-enter the facility. More and more these days, he preferred to be alone. Why bother with companions? Was there any conversation he hadn't already experienced a dozen or more times? And if he even hinted at the black despair that threatened to engulf him, he would only receive knowing looks from other vamps as they dole out the usual diagnosis. He was nearing his 500th birthday and apparently hitting that mid-millennium marker that could plunge the most thought worth of vampires into a midlife crisis. Bullcrap! Roman and Angus were both older than him, and they were content with their lives. They're happily married. He shoved that thought aside. He wouldn't fall prey to that form of insanity, no matter how old he got. No, he was fine being a cold-hearted old bastard. He was good at it. He'd been perfecting the condition for years. He strode through a flower bed, trampling the new blossoms underfoot. I read Carolyn Sparks' Vampire Mind and Vampire and the Virgin some years ago. And of all the books that I've read by this particular author, I fell in love with Vampire Mind. It is a love story between a fallen angel and a vampire. And let me tell you, it is truly a fun, fantastic, amazing, exciting read. So, our topic for today, as you know, and as you've guessed, is vampires. The tall, the dark, and the deadly. According to Amanda Ashley's chapter, Vampires, You Love Them, You Hate Them, which appears in the book How to Write a Romance for the New Market and Get It Published, she states, I write alternative reality fiction because I love a dark and dangerous male. And here's why. Anne Rice reawakened my fascination with them. Lori Herter gave them a romantic twist. Yes, I'm talking about vampires. Not the blood-sucking fiendish ones who send shivers of fear down our spines and give us nightmares. But the dark, tortured heroes who give us shivers of delight and dreams of undying ecstasy, who can promise forever and deliver on it. I can remember how entranced I was when I read Interview with a Vampire, yet how disappointed I was that Anne's vampires were unable to make love. All that charm and charisma, all that raw sexuality, gone to waste. Then along came Nancy Gideon's hero, Lewis. He was everything I wanted in a vampire. He was handsome, mysterious, sexy, lonely, and haunted, 
with just the right blend of danger and tenderness. A vampire who wanted to be mortal again. Oh yes, I love Lewis. About the time I was discovering vampires, I reached a point in my career when I needed a break from writing Western historicals. And as vampires were much on my mind, I wrote a short story for Topaz Anthology entitled Masquerade. Well, a short story merely served to whet my appetite. And so I wrote my novel, Embrace the Night. When I began researching vampires, I discovered there were many myths and beliefs that I'd never heard of before. For me, one of the things that makes writing about vampires so much fun is that you can pick and choose the characteristics that you want to use and ignore the rest. I like the idea of creating my own vampire, of giving him all the traits and characteristics that I find sexy and appealing in a man. I also like the idea that I can allow him to go as dark and as dirty and as raunchy as I want him to go. He can be very erotic and very sensual and very forbidden. Or I could create a vampire that is on the milder, tamer, sweeter side. So I like the idea that I can also blend myths, blend uh, folklore, and just create my own brand, my own version of a vampire. The author, Amanda Ashley, goes on to say, Some of my vampires cast a reflection. Some don't. Some can move about during the hours of the daylight. Some can't. Some are repelled by crosses. Some aren't. Some become mortal again. Half of the fun of writing stories about ghosts and vampires is letting your imagination run wild. The vampire in my book, Deeper Than the Night, was not a true vampire at all, but an alien from another world, suggesting that vampires were not really native to Earth, but were outcasts from a distant planet. In my book, Moonlight, my hero was to be sacrificed to a vampire goddess. Instead of dining on him, she gave him the dark gift. It was interesting for me as a writer to take my vampire from the distant past to the present. This was a rather dark tale, and yet I loved Nervare. The author goes on to say, my favorite book is Embrace the Night. The book opens in old England. My vampire falls in love with a young woman and eventually he marries her and they live together until she dies. Heartbroken, he burrows into the earth and sleeps beside her coffin for many years. And when he arises again, it is a new world where he finds his old love again reincarnated. In Shades of Grey, my character time travels to the past for a short time. Again, you can do pretty much anything you want as long as you make it logical and believable. The main thing to remember in writing about a vampire hero is that he must be sympathetic and romantic, dark and tortured by what he is, separated from the rest of humanity by a secret he cannot share. Nevertheless, he still yearns for love for the one woman who can see past the monster to the man inside. The heroine, of course, is both attracted and repelled. Vampire heroes are mesmerizing. They can hypnotize the heroine with a glance, bend her will to his with a word. Yet, they should have a sense of honor that prohibits them from taking advantage of her. In addition, there must be that sense of danger the awareness that loving this man could be hazardous, even fatal for the heroine. I have never tried my hand at writing paranormal romances or vampire romances. However, in the future, I am sure at some point I will delve into the world of the paranormal romances. And of course, my first characters will be vampires. My second will be ghosts. 
So thank you for joining my channel. And until next time, bye-bye.